Washington Journal continues. The Supreme Court last week just wrapped up its current term with a number of significant decisions and announcements about what's ahead. Joining us to, to look at some of those key decisions, how the court looked and what may be ahead, we're here with uh, Brian Gorod, who is with the, the Constitutional Accountability Center. She's chief counsel with that organization. And John Malcolm with the Heritage Foundation. He's vice president for the Institute for Constitutional Government. Thanks for both of you for being in this morning. Good Thanks for having me. We will start with, uh, Brianne, I'll start with you and, and ask, what's your take on the decisions that came down in the, the recent term? Well, you know, there were two big decisions that came down the last day of the term, one in the partisan gerrymandering cases. So these are cases about whether the political party that's in power can entrench itself in power no matter what the voters say. And I think this was a, a deeply disappointing decision from the court because the chief justice and the court's conservative justices basically threw up their hands. They acknowledged that extreme partisan gerrymanders are inconsistent with democratic principles, um, but said the courts aren't equipped to do anything about them. And I think Justice Kagan got it exactly right in her decision when she recognized that we know that courts can do something about these things because they have been doing it. Courts around the country have recognized that partisan gerrymandering is unconstitutional and the courts can address that. And the other, you, the, you, what was the other decision last week that you thought was important? So the other decision was in uh, the census case, so mm -hmm. a challenge to the Trump administration's decision to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. And, and this one I think the Chief Justice got basically right. He, he, I think I disagree with some of his analysis, some of his legal reasoning, but he was definitely right to reject the Trump administration's effort to add this question to the census. Um, as he said, the Secretary of Commerce's decision to add it, the reason he gave was pretextual, and the addition of this question would have undermined the accuracy of the census count. And this is a critically important count that we as a country take every 10 years. It determines how representatives are allocated in Congress, how billions of dollars of federal funding are allocated, and even the Census Bureau's own experts recognize that adding this question would deter responses from immigrant communities and undermine the accuracy of the count. And John Malcolm from the Heritage Foundation, your take on the recently completed term. Sure. Well, as is the case with all terms, there were some opinions that pleased me and some that disappointed uh, me. Uh, I would have added in terms of the last week the agency deference case, the Kaiser case, uh, where I thought it was a, a step in the right direction of reining in the deference that courts are supposed to give to executive branch agencies in interpreting their own regulations, uh, but it didn't go as far as I would have uh, would have liked. I will comment uh, only because Brianne just gave uh, her side of the story <laughs> on, on those two cases. Uh, so with respect to the partisan uh, gerrymandering case, Rucho, uh, the court said, you know, look, partisan gerrymandering has been around in our entire nation's history. In fact, the phrase gerrymander uh, came along when Eldridge Gerry was governor of Massachusetts in the early 1800s. He was later vice president under James uh, Madison. And he drew a district that looked like a salamander, hence gerrymandering. That's where the phrase came from. And it's been around forever. And, and the the majority in, in the Rucho case didn't say, we like partisan gerrymandering. Partisan gerrymandering is just swell. What they said is, the framers in the Constitution didn't give judges a role. They said that this is up to the states, checked by Congress uh, in order to, uh, uh, to do anything, if they want to do anything about partisan uh, gerrymandering, uh, and that any constitutional challenge speaks of a need for proportional representation. There's nothing in the Constitution about, uh, about proportional representation. And there is no measurable, reliable uh, criteria that one can come up with to measure how much partisanship is too much. So what they said is, look, if you don't like partisan gerrymandering, that's fine, but resort to Congress and your state legislatures. Don't come to the courts. You know, with respect to the census uh, case, look, we had uh, a citizenship question on our census in one form or another from 1810 to 2000, the exception being one year in 1820, there was no citizenship uh, uh, question. There are all kinds of questions about race and, 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 and you know, gender and all kinds of preferences uh, on, uh, on the census. Uh, and you know, the court said that this wasn't a violation of the Constitution. Uh, the enumerations clause says that there's supposed to be a census conducted every 10 years. It doesn't say how. Uh, Congress has that authority. It's delegated it by statute uh, to the Secretary of Commerce. You know, I, um, I don't think the court got the, uh, uh, the majority. It was a really fractured opinion. The last part of the opinion is the opinion that Brianna was referring to in which the four so-called liberal 
uh, justices joined Chief Justice Roberts to say that Secretary Ross's reason for doing this was pretextual. He didn't say that it wasn't going to happen. What he did was he kicked it, the case back to the lower courts, gave Commerce an opportunity to come forward with a more fulsome explanation. But whether they're going to have time to get that done, that's very much in doubt. It, it certainly felt a little 